Planet 1 is our starting point. Planet 2 is a future version of Planet 1, wherein things progress normally without the appearance of a second planet, and it gets sent back in time. The Canoness sets her bomb to destroy Planet 1 in the future. This changes events so that Planet 1 is on a new timeline and does not ever become Planet 2, because the potential Planet 2 would be in theory be destroyed in the future before it can ever go back in time. She makes this decision only after Planet 2 appears, so it does not immediately go away. This is also why the two timelines are different in the first place. Because she acted with the knowledge that Planet 2 did slash would exist, which Planet 2's canoness would not have known in her own timeline. Planet 1 is now on a second timeline. The bomb is stolen and thus does not destroy Planet 1, like it would if the timeline progressed in the same way as Planet 2. Planet 1 goes back in time because of the bomb, where it will threaten to impact itself in the past. Events on Planet 1 proceed the same way again, except that Planet 2's role is replaced by future Planet 1. Planet 2's timeline now never existed from the perspective of an outside observer, even though it influenced the creation of the second timeline. Our protagonists are on the future Planet 1, which exists on its own in space because past Planet 1 went back in time to become future Planet 1 because they collided, closing the loop. If we are going to continue with this glorious story arc, we might want to set up a few ground rules. First, avoid future instances of time travel as established. You can reference the first instance of time travel though. Example of this is my Commissar character now having a double of himself and his regiments. Second, try to keep the green text stories within the system or at the very least have it somewhat related. Example, Grandpop Smurf having a mental breakdown over this sector being in a never-ending state of war that is consuming a fuckload of resources. Third, if it's not your character, don't try to kill them unless the original writer faggot stated that the character died and left it somewhat vague. In cases where two or more people are able to kill a character, that is not their own in this way. It will be first come first server for which one will be considered canon. Any other rules or changes you guys want? Also, thanks for making the last thread and this one fun. Now we need to get a few drawing fags to depict the landscape and characters of this storyline. I've been doing most of the Blood Raven posts. B. Blood Raven Sergeant Tack and Hanover Fist. So far, we've managed to recover several gifted relics, including, but not limited to, Salamander War Gear, Dark Angels War Gear, an entire company of Primaris Ultramarines, they need a paint job, a crate containing 100 Augrens, 100 Bang Blades, several Titans, I think four, a broken Eldar Grav tank, several crates of Imperial Guard flashlights, several crates of Imperial Guard plasma weapons, several squads of Imperial Guard, the dozer blade off the front of a Sororitas repressor, a bunch of spare Sororitas armor and weapons, half of an Inquisitorial retinue, the Canoness scarf, and her mind pattern Sororitas cape. I think a heretic raven dust bunny has made off with a cyclone torpedo, and I'm currently trying to figure out how to gift the living saint Bridget and a hive city to the blood ravens without anybody noticing. Let the games begin? Oh, and we lifted some Grey Knights war gear too. For reasons. They're important chapter relics after all. Be me, Slaneshi heretic with blessed penis. Barely survived the massive plus 12 faction clusterfuck. Cornates try to mount head on pike no less than 64 times. They somehow fail. Laughing Slaneshi dot heretic. Tired of this shit. Light a coke blunt in an alleyway. World Eater sees. Soon an entire squad, 
plus cultists are chasing me. They catch me and I'm about to be fucked. Not in the fun way, dot thirsty goddess. The moment before the axe falls, the planet is swallowed into the warp. What luck, dot Pornhub. Warp fuckery happens. Somehow I'm in the exact same alleyway, but in the future, present, planet. Where'd the cornates go? Who cares, dot dildo. Suddenly see some rando fag dragging on a blunt, just like mine. Wait a minute. It's me. From an alternate timeline where cornates never caught me. But wait, where's future me? Not me has no idea. What the fuck, dot keeper of secrets? Realize both going to die any moment. Find an empty, relatively not burning dumpster. Probably full of asbestos, but who cares. Climb under sacks with not me. Mutant Venus clone heresy ensues. That filling wind, this is my fetish. That filling wind, Slaneshi. That filling wind, Venus. Be commissar on Orc clan cleanup duty after that shit show of a campaign. Squad consists of leftover guardsmen from the campaign. The Mordian told the Cadian to stop being a bitch about Cadia since they lost their home too. Needless to say, this didn't end well. Also, I managed to find a strange leash today, probably from those Eldar bastards. Well, at least I have a way to make sure the last Kriegsman doesn't kill himself. Be hellhound driver Stukov. Crew's dead, but I can drive and fire with this new fancy tech. Everything is still on fire. No idea what exactly it is, but it's on fire. Importer be praised of PNG. Get a random call from one of the sister CEOs. Is everything still on fire there? It better fucking be. I respond nonchalantly. It could be more on fire. She paused and then giggles maniacally. Eventually stops laughing and tells me I sound cute and gives me her Vox number. Later receive a logistics supply drop. It's a few servitors to repair the tank. A second infernal cannon and a huge tank of Prometheum with a bunch of flowers and a note. From the Emperor's love to you. It had a kiss on it too. Smelled like old the napalm. Damn, it feels good to be an Imperial .mp3. Be rogue trader. I've hit a bit of a setback. Supplies are nearly gone and my men keep complaining of starvation. As if I haven't noticed. Having a five course dinner like some poor death world savage. Dauntless got its warp drive blown to hell and dragged my two frigates straight into the warp with it. Cruiser we're on is nearly a space hulk but fortunately should be demon free. What's left of the crew is borderline mutinous, and only being kept in line by my remarkable charisma. Also, my arc militant gave the first group of would-be mutineers and other engineered personnel to the tech priests and had them turned into servitors. I swear my honor guard got smarter. Speaking of tech priests, I'm pretty sure I heard our engineer tearing off duct tape when he said he had to make some last minute repairs to our warp engines. Dynasty has admittedly seen better days. But sometimes the Emperor just besets you with some entirely unavoidable misfortunes that aren't really anybody's living's fault. And all you can do is make the best of it. On course for what my head navigator thinks is probably maybe some backwater hellhole in the middle of nowhere. He did start cackling halfway there for a considerably longer time than the last guy usually did, though so I'm not sure. Finally, limp out of the warp. Planet is supposed to be an ice world. Instead it's on fire. Surrounded by the Imperial Navy. A couple space marine chapters, the Sisters of Battle, a fucking Admech Titan Legion that'd probably dig it if I turned the rest of my crew into servitors, an Orc Wag, 
more heretics than you can count, Tyranids, some Eldar, the annoying Eldar, I think I see a Tau ship, and unfortunately there's some other fucking rogue traitors. By the Emperor, Dot Fox, my fortune's finally turning around.